Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another edition of Curator's Corner. I'm Jeff Seymour, historian and curator at the National Civil War Naval Museum. For this edition of Curator's Corner, we are on special assignment away from the confines of the beautiful museum. We are at the shipyard, the construction site for the CSS Jackson. Right here behind me is the spot. It's a cutout that was dug into the river bank at the Navy Yard. To my left, which is upstream here along the Chattahoochee River, is the ironworks. And right here it's connected by rail, but the Navy Yard was basically between this area, this cutout, and the ironworks. So you've got a tremendous facility here for the construction of ships. The Jackson itself, remember it's the ironclad, she's 225 feet long and 57 feet wide. But if you look behind me here, this huge crater looking cutout of the riverbank. This was dug out in order to facilitate the construction of the Jackson. Now they began construction in August of 1862 and the Jackson goes through transformation until its final form and was launched here in the river in December of 1864. And it was right here along the docks in this spot that the Jackson was finally destroyed by federal forces after the Battle of Columbus in April of 1865. So this is the spot. One of the biggest changes to this space is that in the early 1900s, this was transformed into an amphitheater. So this has been used as a public space for several decades. Before that, it was used for a time as a trash dump. And so there were a number of ways that this space was used in different ways than a Navy yard. Likewise, the river has changed in a tremendous number of ways since the American Civil War. Right here behind me is the Chattahoochee River, and one of the features of this area is that it's not built or dug out straight into the bank. It's done at an angle to the river. The idea behind the construction of the Jackson, because it's so large and the river is actually not as deep and consistent as we think of it today. The river has changed so much over the years with the building of dams upstream and downstream that it's changed the nature of the river between now and then. But the, the Jackson was built in this area at an angle to the river with the idea of it going out and moving downstream not really being able to move back upstream once she got into full operation. So it's not at a 90 degree angle, it, it, it is at a more pronounced angle to the riverbank to allow the vessel to go downstream directly from launching. And as big as that vessel is, it's not going to turn around in the river. Otherwise it would block the entire river up. The river is maintained by the dam immediately upstream from Columbus and the Corps of Engineers operates the level of the water. So that changes quite a bit over the course of a day. And they've been keeping the water up lately so it's difficult to really get a sense of the true nature of the river from the time period. But when the water is low, if you come to this spot, you can see the wooden pylons that are built into the bed of the river where the original platform was that went out into the river. Now remember that this vessel is so large, they built this cutout into the bank, and once they got finished with the vessel, when they launched her in December of 1864, they cut the supporting logs out from under her and slid her right into the river, ready to go. And, as one of the local newspaper reporters reported in the paper the next day, she floated like a duck on a pond. So it's, it's pretty amazing that such a large vessel like this was built right here in Columbus, Georgia, right on this very spot. 
right here in this spot we're a little bit closer to the river now the river has changed dramatically over the years the biggest change to the river system has been the building of dams along the river there are several downstream and upstream from us this changes the natural flow of the water. So the river bank has changed, the river course has settled down a bit instead of a tremendous amount of changes. And the Corps of Engineers actually controls the amount of water through those dams along the riverway. So it's a bit more stable. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for watching Curator's Corner. It's been fun to be here on assignment at one of those hidden places as far as a historical site goes in, in our fair city of Columbus, Georgia. But it goes to the testament of the industrial capacity of what Columbus actually meant during the American Civil War. So once again, thank you for joining us here and come visit us at the National Civil War Naval Museum in Columbus, Georgia.